the Lord that thanks due to his righteousness. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord the Most High. Give thanks unto the Lord from the bottom of your hearts. Exalt the name of the Lord, appreciate him. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for his favor. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for his provision upon your life, upon your family. Let's give God all the praise. Let's worship his holy name. Let's adore his holy name. Let's sing praise to the most high God. Let's worship him. The incomparable God, the matchless God, the holy one of Israel. The one who was, the one who is and is to come. The everlasting God and the prince of peace. The rose of Sharon, Alphonse Omega, the beginning and the end, it changes not. Our comforter, our provider, our healer, our strength, the whole is his name. He never changes, he changes not for so us. Father, we worship you. You are Jehovah Tifeno. You are Jehovah El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Almighty oh, God. We worship you. We bless your holy name. We give you praise, O Lord. We accept your holy name. We give you praise, O Lord. We give you praise, O Lord. We give you praise, O Lord. We worship you, O Lord. We accept your holy name. We give you praise, O Lord. We accept your holy name. You are bigger than the biggest. You are higher than the highest. You are the mighty one of the Lord. You are the one that made the way when I say it to be no way. You have been our shield, O Lord. You have been our covenant, O Lord. You have been our refuge, O Lord. We are grateful, O Lord. We are grateful, O Lord. We are grateful, O Lord. Let it be your name, O Lord. Our souls, O Lord. Our hearts, O Lord. Our hearts, O Lord. Our hearts, O Lord. worship you. Mighty Redeemer, we give God our praise to Lord. We thank you for what you have done in our life. We thank you for what you are doing right now. And we thank you for what you will do in the future. We give God the praises, Lord, be the exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, we thank you because you are already in our midst this morning. You are welcome to have your way. Let life be saved. Let life be lifted up this morning. In the name of Jesus, send your word to us, O Lord. As many that they have ordained to be at this service, Father, extend their feet and bring them here. Stand and safely in the name of Jesus. Every obstacle on their way will remove in the name of Jesus. The blessing of today, Lord Jehovah, let it be our portion in the name of Jesus. Take control of today's service and let your name alone continue to be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Glad in the Lord and rejoice.
Because we are overcomers. I can see our beautiful faces, especially from the choir angle. I have my brother Tiki. I like his dance. And uh, I know the people that dance in this church because I look a lot. And I know, I have I have I have I I at the end of the year, we're going to give, going to give you gifts. I mean, give you gifts. And uh, I noticed that when they sang uh, the Igbo song, everybody came alive. You know? Maybe we'll be having. Igbo Sundays, Yoruba Sundays, Ibibio Sundays, and uh, we keep we keep inviting people. This is our Ibibio Sunday. You, you are Ibibio now. You can come to our church. Praise the Lord. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the, that is uh, Revelation twelve eleven. If you have testimony, I give you two minutes. I don't need three people that are jumping with joy. If you are not jumping with joy, if you are not jumping with joy, don't, don't raise your hand. Hallelujah. Those people that are jumping with joy. With joy. Okay, okay, mommy, mommy. I, 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 want, I, want, I, want, I want three people to come and testify to the goodness of our God. Our God has been good. You are not in the mortuary, you are in the sanctuary. I, I, let me tell you a story. There is a lady in one of our rooms, in room 24. Her name is. Uh, let me give her name out of Every night that I'm with that lady, she will help me. Help. And there's nothing medically you can do for her. She passed away. But that thing keeps ringing in my head that there are sometimes there's nothing people can do for you, but only God can do it. So you are in the sanctuary, you are not in the mortuary, my brother. Yes, I know. And uh, I need three people. One, two, three. The first three. Mommy is one. I'll pick my brother. And from this side. God has not done anything this side. Ah, <laughs> okay, my brother. Okay, let me start from there. Can you come over, sir? She lays her hand. I'll give you my slot. Yeah, my Praise the Lord. So, I want to thank God for what God did for me last month. Um, I just feel like it's wrong for Just a month. Just a month. Now. And so last month, I uh, used to play football, and just as I was playing football, I had a tackle, and as I had a tackle, I, it was like it was no more thing. But when I got home, I discovered that I couldn't walk again. Like I couldn't even raise my leg, so I had to call the emergency, and they told me to go to an hospital. But I couldn't even go myself, so so I had to call a friend, and they took me there. And when they did the scan, they said they couldn't find anything wrong with me. Like, that I should just you know, relax. So I was taken back home and I just basically relaxed for about a week and I'm okay. So, thank God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come, my brother, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Will you permit me to sing a song, please? How excellent is your name, oh Lord. How excellent is your name, oh Lord. How excellent is your name. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name, 
thank the God Almighty for the uh, salvation of my soul and that of my family. God has been so good in this church. Mm -hmm. yes, you know, yes. the name of this church is Harvest. Right. We will be continue to be harvesting good things. Amen. Amen. I thank God because you know, at uh, at a point, I was I was just confusing. There was a time a pastor came in and he pointed to me and said, "What are you thinking? That thing is done." I, suddenly, you not know, because I was thinking, how am I going to um, allocate my stay in this country? But you know, God is just so good, and God did it miraculously. Yeah. Yeah. It miraculously. Yeah. God did it. I want us to understand is that whenever we need something, just let us speak and tell God. I can tell you we are going to harvest it. Amen. That is it. And I, I want to use this opportunity to thank our mommy and uh, Pastor PD, PD1 and PD2 for their support, for being mother and father to us because we cannot do it alone. They have always been there for us when we need their help and assistance. I really thank God for everything. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know if you really want to praise my Jesus, you need to do much better than that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I always say that I don't like to come out and say too much testimony. But the truth is, testimony begets testimony. <laughs> Bible says they overcame him by the and the yes. If you give your testimony, more will come. Yeah. So last month I gave you a testimony, mm -hmm. and I was dancing here beside Barachike. Okay, so maybe and I told you that I work part time at that place. That's what I want to do. Only for me to be sitting in my office <laughs> was lecturing, and two teams messages came. But look, they are going to seek you out for good. Amen. In fact, they are going to headhunt you for good. Amen. Amen. It says, do you want one FT? First of all, I said no. <laughs> I need to be careful what I'm saying as I say it on this. It's online. I said no. And then it says, do you want one FT? And then I said yes. And said, but I need you to be module leader for land law. You're going to take on land law. Module leader for immigration law. You're going to take on immigration law at LPC level. Wow. <laughs> I was just getting promoted. Wow. Promoted, promoted, wow. promoted, promoted. Wow. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Yes. For everybody under the sound of my voice, God is lifting you up. Amen. Amen. God is taking you to greater heights. Amen. So I took and the truth, <laughs> the truth about FT in in University is that it's not really FT. What am I? What do you mean by FT? What's FT? Full time. Full time. Full time. Full time. It's not really house. Your time <laughs> is your time. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can do with it to the glory of God as God wants you. Amen. Amen. God just knew that I needed my time <laughs> to serve Him in all manners of ways. Hallelujah. Amen. And He released it to my hands. So somebody will tell me to do all my ministry work. To do all my church <laughs> to go to Malaysia, to travel to Africa, to take holiday, I take full now I take full holiday pay. Wow. Hey. Wow. Hey. Wow. 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 Just in case it was not enough. You see me dancing with all manners of steps. You see me wearing my high excuse me, I'm wearing my high heels again. Glory be to God. <laughs> God is awesome. Come on. Praise the Lord somebody! Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for my life and I want to thank him because when we were praying in August, they said we should fast. Yes. And I fasted. <laughs> and uh, that fasting got to a point that I'll be eating food that <laughs> even up till now I've not adjusted to my feeding because I just eat once in the day and I forget about it. But I eat junks a lot. Can buy this and eat that. But to cut the, to the long story short, I I I had request because I put them in the diary and I'm taking them. God has been doing some. There are some he has not done. But he did one that is very marvelous to me because since I came to this country for the past almost three years now, I've been in my small cubicle, enjoying my life alone, going out and coming to church. But this 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 past month, God gave my family an entry visa. 
and uh, uh, from, from, from December, you will see my, my body will come in. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just wave our hands to this God and bless his name. He is good and he is good, he is good, he is good, he is good. I want pastor to come and pray for us and bless the testifiers. Thank you, Father. Let our testifier stand up. Father, we thank you. As a church, even the ones that were not mentioned, we say thank you. These testimonies you've shared, it will last forever in the name of Jesus. It will lead to the next phase in the name of Jesus. Every plan of the enemy to steal that which God has given. Because the Bible says the devil come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Every plan. Because on this holy altar today, these testimonies have been shared. They will not be stolen. In the name of Jesus. Your next level will appear. And for all those who desire much more is given in Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Choir, give us Amen. That's an offering, man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's an uh, offering, tight and offering time. Blessing that God will respond. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every time to give is an opportunity, you know, to for us to be blessed by our Father. God says, "What is it that He needs that He does not have?" In fact, He doesn't even have any need. As a matter of fact, He says, "If we to be hungry, He won't even tell you, because everything belongs to Him. Everything, including this mic that I'm holding, He made all things. All things were made by Him." Praise the Lord. So we do in our hearts. Let's dip our hands to our pockets. Because our pockets must be very deep. Okay, and uh, let's do that a very bring a very good offering to God. And with uh, the sound of rejoicing, with our dancing steps, let's give to our Father. Hallelujah. Fire peace. I made the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. I made the sacrifice of praise.
I don't know why I was not called. But praise the Lord, I'm here now. And I'm here. I'm here. I love something that the Lord dropped for me. You know, because this month happens to be my Natal day. Yeah. So I remember to Psalm 3. Hallelujah. And they spoke to me in the book of Psalm 18. From verse 20. Please don't go. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It says, For you will light our lamps. I will wait to light now. The Lord our God enlighten our darkness. For by you we can run against a troop. By our God we have leapt over a wall. As for God is where is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who helps us with strength and makes our way perfect. He makes our feet like high feet and sets us upon our high places. It gives us our hands to make more, so that our hearts have, can bear a bar of browns. Yeah. You also have given us the shield of your salvation, Lord. Your right hand has held us up. Your gentleness has made us great. You enlarged our path under us. Yes. Our feet did not sleep. We have pursued our enemies and overtaken them. Neither did we turn back till they were destroyed. We have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under our feet, for you have armed us with strength for the battle. You have subdued our under us those who rose up against us. You have also given us the snakes of our enemies, so that we destroyed those who hated us. They cried out, but there was none to say, even to the Lord, but he did not answer. Mercy was taken away from them. Then we beat them as fine as dust before the wind. We cast them out like death in the street. You have delivered us from the strivings of the people. You have made the head of the you have made us the head of the nations. As a people I, we have not known, a people we have not known shall save us. I thought we say amen. Amen. For people who are not known shall save us. Yes. As soon as they hear of us, they shall obey. Yes. The foreigners shall submit to us. Submit. The foreigners straight away and come frightened from their high house. The Lord lives. Blessed be our rock. Let the God of our salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges us and subdues the people under us. He delivers us from our enemies. You lift up us all from above those who rise against us. You are delivered us from the violent man. Therefore, give thanks to the Lord, O God, among the Gentiles. And see praise to his name. Great deliverance he gives to us and shows us his anointed to, to have his fellowship and with our people forever. Hallelujah. But I want to say thank you for the gift of all of righteousness to God. And the grace to give to you, we say thank you, Jehovah. Accept our offerings, O oh God. Accept our dances. Accept us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we are praying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's about six. Praise God. Ah, are we called? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're about to go into that section that has brought us to the service. And I want you to begin to view how God is going to bless you this month. The month is to be for God to bless you. Before we see from the altar, I want you to use your mouth, your mouth, your own mouth, to command your destiny, to command your blessings. And Moses said, but just said, if you don't follow us, God will go. So tell God to follow you deeply this month. Before we start, tell God to follow you. Just begin to pray in your spirit. Open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain. Cause your rain to fall on us. Take one more time. Open the floodgates. Begin to pray your spirit. In abundance. And cause your rain.
that the impact you are asking us to make is not in our pocket. The impact you are asking us to make is not just for our careers. The impact that you are asking us to make, oh God, is that we will go and be your hands on your feet in our generation. Lord, we understand that the impact you are asking us to make is to go and promote and progress the name of Jesus Christ in our day. We know, Father God, that the impact you are asking us to make is to go into all the world and make disciples for you. And we have an understanding, Father, that there is nothing that we can do by ourselves. For it is not by our power or by our might. It is by your spirit, Heavenly Father. We understand that, Lord, we don't know anything. That we don't know it, oh God. And whatever we thought we knew, oh Father, each new day, the Bible says, every day your love is new towards us. Your word, oh Lord God, continues to find fulfillment from generation to generation. So how can we say we know it all? So Father God, this morning we're asking that again you will empower us by your word. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Father, that even in our rejoicing, oh Lord God, our testifying, for you have done great things for us, of which we are glad. For you have been mighty in our midst, Jehovah. For you have done the things that no man can do for us. For you have wrought healing in our lives. You have brought peace in our home. You have caused joy to fill our hearts. You have ensured that we do not go hungry. You have ensured, Father God, that even though the, 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 the world says there is a casting down, in our midst we can say there is a lifting. So we are grateful to you, Father. We understand that you have been good and your mercies towards us are forever lasting. So, Father, this morning we are asking that you will speak your word to us, O oh God, with clarity and with precision, Father. Cause the word to find its mark in each of our lives. I pray, my God, that there will be nobody under the sound of my voice, oh God, who will not be impacted by you in some way or the other this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord, our ears of understanding will be open. Our hearts not ready to receive. I truly, our hearts will be soft, oh God, in your hand. That will be compliable in your hand so that you can use us for your purpose and for your glory. Father, we thank you because you bring your word to us this morning. Lord, I hide myself behind the cross of Jesus Christ. That's not God that my voice will not be heard this morning, but your voice. Amen. That Lord God, no man, no woman will take glory in your presence Amen. today. Amen. But Lord, that you will take all the glory. Amen. Speak to us all, Father, including me, the speaker. Amen. That, oh God, my life truly may receive empowerment, Father, <laughs> to make a difference, to be the difference in my generation. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Please be seated in his awesome presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Truly, you know, we can say all around, every the love of God surrounds us in this parish. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mama Giwa, congratulations. Happy birthday to you and to my son, to my baby. Uh, Andre, I do be happy first birthday. I hope you're all going to stay back and enjoy his first birthday with him. His parents have provided some beautiful, sumptuous stuff for us to enjoy together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then I forgot to tell you that I, I'm part of your November rejoicing. Yes, My son, Bartholomew Mofi, follower John Hayden, just yesterday was his 26th birthday. <laughs> so I forgot to mention that one. Just goes to show when they're 26, I think you think when they've grown up. He, the boy said, I don't want to do anything. I thought, well, you, in your life, I will always be rejoicing. So I will always be celebrating in Jesus' name. Amen. So we did a surreptitious kind of something that he didn't know about. Anyway, God is good. So I congratulate all November babes, November people, November peeps. Yes. God bless you. Amen. And as we come to it, we'll be mentioning it and glorifying God for your lives. Amen. Welcome, Harvest family. God bless you. It's so wonderful to see you all here this morning. What a wonderful God we serve. And yet this is not all of us. I know some people are missing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But wherever they are, we pray that Almighty God himself will touch them and bless their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. So this is the month of empowerment for impact. Hallelujah. I thought somebody would say, we celebrate Jesus. Ha, empowerment for impact. Maybe because you don't understand what he's saying to us. Yes, but I, I know you will understand as we go in Jesus' name. So, impact, what's that? I've defined this one for you before. It's an action of one object coming forcibly into contact with an, another. The action of one object coming forcibly in contact with another. So, when this thing wants to make impact, that, it makes impact with that lectern, forcibly. Then also, it can mean to affect, to make a marked effect or influence. And that is the one, both of them are relevant for me. 
Impact also means to make a marked effect or to have a marked effect or influence. So to make impact is to be an influencer because to make impact is to have influence. Hallelujah. And you know, in social media terms, the social media world, the influencers are those ones who kind of have the ability to influence other people or to influence the market to, to, to buy something, to they promote something. They influence the market to believe that because they recommend it on their social media platform, it's a good thing. So they're trying to influence other people. So, you know, these guys, social media, and, and because people follow them, you know, sometimes you have thousands of people, millions of people following the person. Because people follow them, whatever they say is good, the whole world begins to say it's good because they have influence. Almighty God will cause us to have influence in the name of Jesus. So in our own context though, to have influence is to have the capacity to have an effect on the character, the development, or the behavior of someone or something. Nothing can also have the same effect on itself. So to have influence is to have capacity or to make impact. I just made impact equal to influence for you. Therefore, to have influence is to have capacity to have an effect on the character, the development, or behavior of someone or something. Or in fact, on that thing itself. So, this month, God is saying, I want to empower you or I want you to receive power to have influence. Amen. So, what does it mean to be empowered then? Again, very easy. It is to receive power or to receive ability or to receive enablement to do something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it is usually for a specific purpose. So, it's to receive power, ability, or enablement to do something. Usually for some specific purpose. Turn with me to Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Hallelujah. In that scripture, we have a mandate. Every child of God is given a mandate. Every child of God. The mandate says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So, that is our mandate for every child of God. That's your mandate. Your mandate from heaven is to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. To baptize them. To make sure that they know God. To teach them to observe all things that is of God. So in this month, God wants to release to you and I the ability and the enablement to fulfill our purpose. Praise the Lord. So to impact, the, our, our definition is to impact or to influence is to have effect on character. So we are receiving enablement to influence character by bringing them to Christ. The enablement to bring them to Christ is what God wants to empower us for so that we can affect their character. You cannot affect a person's character unless their heart changes. Something must change on the inside of them. When people say they are born again, the only way you can know a born again person is that they, are, they change. Praise the Lord. Not, maybe not everything in them will change straight away. But there will be a market difference. There will be some things that they used to do that they would not want to do. Because once you give your life to Christ, it's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. The Spirit of God comes and takes residence in your heart. And you begin to want to fulfill and do things in God's way. Of course, it's not that easy. But the process starts. And then, we are to bring them to Christ. And we are to develop them. To, the, to be an influencer is to develop somebody. That means we are making, the scripture says we should make disciples. That's what that's our mandate. We are to bring them to Christ. And we are to make disciples of all nations. 
How do you develop a person? You teach them how to be the way that Christ wants them to be. You help them to understand Christ in the way that they should. And to begin to follow him in the, the, way, the way that they ought to follow him. So, we have a mandate to go and bring people in and to teach them the gospel. And then, we are to help them, isn't it? We are to look at their behavior. Their behavior is when they begin to function as Christ functions. So, we begin to release them. We release them into their mission, into their ministry. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our mandate is more than that. Matthew 10, 8. Matthew 10, 8. Come with me. Matthew 10, verse 8. Matthew 10, 8. The Bible says in that scripture, it says, as I'll, I'll read from verse 7. In fact, from verse 6, because it makes more sense. It says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is, go to all the world. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Teach them. Heal the sick, he says. Cleanse lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. For freely you have received, freely give. Praise the Lord. Amen. You and I have a mandate to also cast out demons. To heal the sick. To cleanse lepers. To raise the dead. Praise God. Amen. We, You and I are commanded to do these things. God sees a need in his world for us not just to be Christians by name, but to be Christians in our actions. To carry the power of Christ in us as we go. To understand the power of Christ as we go. Hallelujah. God is mandating you and I not to be ordinary wherever we are. Praise the Lord. Not to be ordinary. We are to be different. We are to be extraordinary. This is what he's saying to us. Because ordinary people don't raise the dead. They don't cast out demons. Ordinary people. You're, ordinary is ordinary. You go into a, amongst ordinary people, you're also ordinary. But we are to be different. We are to go and perform the works of Christ in our community. Look at Isaiah chapter 58 verse 10. Isaiah 58 10. Isaiah chapter 58 10. This is what that scripture says. He says, If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. Praise the Lord. So this is this is the encouragement or the, the reward, if you like, that God is giving us. That if we go and do these things that He asks us to do, amen. If we go and we you know, go to the lost ship of Israel. If we go and cast out demons, if we go and make disciples of every nation, he says something is going to happen. If you do this, if you extend your soul to the hungry, that's you're afflicted. Not just those who are physically hungry, but those who are hungry in their soul also. Those who are hungry and they don't know they're hungry because they need Christ. They, they're hungry, but they don't know it. There's no recognition of that hunger. Something, some people will describe to you their situation. They will say, I just feel empty. They just say, you know, there's just something that in my heart that, that, that I, I can't explain. I just, I'm just not quite all there. They're explaining to you a need for Christ. Do you know, I know, that what they need is the only thing or the only person that can fill that gap in their lives is Jesus Christ. But they don't understand that. And the Bible says you and I have to go and tell them. It says if we extend our soul to these ones and satisfy the afflicted soul, then our light shall dawn in the darkness. It will not be difficult for you to make impact. It will not be difficult for you to make a difference. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, when we look at all this that I'm talking about, and that's, this is just a little, for me, those, these things capture me because I recognize that I am no ordinary person. That I am not an ordinary being. I am not ordinary. And neither are you. If you carry Christ in you, you are not ordinary. There is something about you that when you get into wherever you are, it's supposed to cause a stir. That's why for some of us, you get into a situation and you know, they, they, you, 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 they don't like you. They don't like you. Why would they like you? They didn't like Jesus. They hated him. They were looking for all kinds of opportunities to stone him, to throw him in the dungeon, to, 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 to crucify him. Even I got to a point that his own people, that's exactly what they did. 
So, why is it that we think that we will be different from our master? Why is it that we think that our case is different? Do we know better than him, maybe? Or have we walked the path that he has walked successfully and not died? Maybe we took a disease of other people and we didn't die. Otherwise, why would we think that he would go through something, through the valley of the shadow of death, and you and I wouldn't? Why would we think that he would go through oppression and suppression of all kinds and that we wouldn't have to do that? When you go into the world to make disciples of every nation, what the Bible, what it tells us is, I have, you know, surely he has, he was wounded for our transgressions. So he has taken us, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was placed upon him and by his stripes we are healed. The chastisement for our peace means that in the situations that we are going to pass through, Jesus Christ has borne the stripes so that you can be at peace in that situation. He didn't say, he said in the world you will see trouble. So when you are preached to that when you are a Christian and you are flowing the power, nothing is going to happen to you. It's a lie. The scripture is very clear. In the world you will see trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What he said to you is that the end of it is that you win. But he's not saying you won't pass through. You are going to pass through. Don't let anybody joke with you that the reason you are passing through is because you don't know Christ well enough. Excuse me. You need to be able to open your Bible. I say, you see, the Bible says the chastisement for my peace was placed upon him. That means that even through this that I am passing, I, will, I can be at peace. I can find his peace. And because we are human beings, we don't necessarily get time to peace straight away, no. Many times we are agitated. Oh my gosh, the fluctuation of our BP at that time can be like up and down. But in it, at some point, because we know Christ, we must find his peace and be able to begin to rest in his peace, knowing that the King Prince of Peace dwells on the inside of us, and therefore knowing that it's all going to be all right. Hallelujah. That at the end we have victory. Praise the Lord. And at the end, everything is going to be fine. Hallelujah. So, now, of course, we're talking about empowerment. The chief empowerer, who is the chief empowerer? The chief empowerer is the Holy Spirit. For, and that's the one we need. We need empowerment. And the empowerment we need, the only empowerment we need, is that one that the Holy Spirit gives us. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let's have a look at that scripture. Very quickly. Acts 1 8. All of this that I'm preaching to you this morning, you know it. You are, it's not something that is new to you. You know it. All that the Holy Spirit is doing this morning is to encourage you and to kind of make you to see just how important you are in the scheme of things on the face of this earth. You and I are here to be influencers. We are not here to be mixer uppers. You know, sometimes we get to a place we say, I want to identify with them. Hallelujah. I want to, I want to, uh, well, I want to mingle. Thank you. That's the word. I want to mingle. I don't want to be different. No, you are supposed to be different. You are supposed to be different. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hidden. The light, I think I read it in the scripture here. We are so that, you know, our brightness can outshine the darkness of this world. That's the reason. Isaiah 58 10, I think it was read. So, what you don't do we need? Acts 1 8. Acts 1 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. You will be witnesses to me in your backyard. And then you're going to be witnesses to me in your rugby and Warwickshire. And then you're going to be witnesses to me in the United Kingdom. And then you're going to be witnesses to me to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. You're going to come with me to Malaysia and come with me to Malawi. Come on, hallelujah. Ah, you receive it. Amen. It shall be so in Jesus' name. You will come with me to, to Ghana and to all those wonderful places and to Burundi and Tanzania where God has sent us in this church as for Africa missions. Praise the Lord. This church is the one who leads on Africa missions in region 4. That should be something that we are all excited about and really wanting God to do more for us. Me, I'm a missionary. This is a missionary church. I love to travel to the mission field. In fact, sometimes you go there, you don't want to come back. Except you know that if, if you don't come back, there will be no money to go to the next one. So you just come back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
this is what God is calling us to be. He wants us to go to the ends of the earth and make a difference for him in those places. Hallelujah. He wants us to go to the places where, where Jesus is needed and go there and be the ones who preach that gospel and empower them, build them or teach them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, what do we need empowerment for? I was just thinking, well, okay, you know, all the things that the Holy Spirit needs to teach us, he is the one who is going to teach us. He is the one who is going to show us how to make it by sense so that you can be witnesses for me today. That is so that you can be an influencer for me in your backyard. So that you can make impact for me in rugby. So that you can make impact for me in the United Kingdom. You can make impact for me to all the ends of the earth. That is what God is empowering you and I for. So our empowerment, beloved, much as I love jollof rice, is not for cooking jollof rice, ladies. Are you hearing me? It's not for cooking jollof rice, oh. And gentlemen, it's not even for making money. Our empowerment is to do the work of the ministry. Praise the Lord. I'm not looking at you. It's to do the work of Christ. That's what our empowerment is for. Hallelujah. So, what do we need? How do we go about this? What are the things? This, uh, this is just a few things that I think, you know, that the, the, that the Holy Spirit is going to release empowerment for us for in this season in Jesus' name. Amen. He's going to teach us. So that we can make impact. So that we can be a person of impact. So, so that we can be an influencer. Hallelujah. Amen. John 14, 26. John 14, 26. Look at what the scripture says here. That the comforter, the Holy Spirit himself, is going to enable us. John 14, 26. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, I was hoping I was I was going to cheat. Let me use my Bible. John 14, 26 says, But the helper, he's your helper. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things I have said to you. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said these things is not like we don't know them. But the Holy Spirit needs to help us bring them to our remembrance. Because in all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in, oh, through all this, I know this one in Yoruba very well, and I thought I'm going to use it when we do Yoruba stuff. Through all the. In all the changing scenes of life, through trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall be. So that He wants to empower, so that through all the changing scenes of life, when there is trouble and when there is peace, when things are the way you think it's going to be and not the way it's going to be, you are able to stand and to continue to fulfill the purposes of God for your life and for your generation. <coughs> so I looked at five things that I thought in this my brief time that is gone, that I thought that God would help us with in this season, that we need empowerment for. For you, it may be different, you know. There may be quite uh, quite a few other things that you are looking to go and you're saying, God, you empower me here, you empower me here. But I thought these five, you know, would, would for me make a difference. Number one, we need empowerment in character. Empowerment in character. You know, beloved, an anointed person without character will become a character. Anointing is great, but if you have no character to add to it, it is a thing that can destroy. And not just you, everyone around you. I'm not going to read the scriptures, but go and have a look at the case of Saul. Saul was king. He was there just he was anointed just like that. Because the people of Israel shouted for a king. They wanted a king. And God chose Saul and anointed him. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you, you know, his character came out. The day he needed to make a sacrifice. And he knew it was not his sacrifice to make. Someone said, wait for me, I'm coming. Because I'm the priest. As much as you are king, in these matters, I am superior, senior to you. <coughs> Many times, when we are charismatic, and we are anointed, we don't give honor to whom honor is due. We can't submit. Because God is using us in a particular way. It's a disaster. Have a look at the matter of Saul. It will help us. And then look at Samson. Look at Samson. Samson, full of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes on him like this, bush, he just goes and he can do anything. But the guy had no character. If you go and look at the book of Samson, you see from day one, he said, get me that girl. She was from amongst the Philistines. The parents rushed 
I'm going to got the girl for him. Hey, um, do this for me. The parents rushed. I'm going. Don't spoil anybody. Don't 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 let them mess up. And then the day that he brought honey from the carcass of a lion, honey which he was not supposed to touch, because God had said this one, no unclean thing, must come near him. The parents took the honey from him and ate. Nobody asked him, where did you get that honey from? No character. Hmm. Anointing without character is a disastrous thing. So let me move from there. Number two, where we need empowerment. The Holy Ghost will empower us in these areas in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's in the area of knowledge and skills acquisition. We need for us to make impact. We need knowledge and we need to have the skills to be able to carry out the assignment that God has sent us to carry out. And for me, I looked at those things in three areas. Number one, I said study. You must study the word. Second Timothy chapter 2.15, study. Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. It is the same for us. You must know the word of God. That's why we've been going on the purpose-driven journey. You know, you might say, uh, Pastor Require and somebody else is pastor. The guy is my mentor because I follow his teaching. Very practical Christian life teachings. That will enhance your life and make sure that you're able to stand and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without fear or favor. Study. Number two, study the word of God. Number two, I put here, go back to school if you must. Because this scripture in 2 Timothy, it also has to do with educational uh, ability or knowledge in that way. It refers to education. It refers to you being the best at whatever you do. Hallelujah. It refers to you making sure that you are an expert in your area. Be an expert in your area. We are children of God. A mediocrity might be okay for other people. Not for you. Not for you. It might be other good for other people to just say, well, you know, I just earned it. Please, nobody is going, no child in this ministry in the name of Jesus is going to earn a degree lower than any of the adults here in Jesus' name. And none of the adults got anything less than 2-2. Two, two. So it means you are not going to get anything. And in fact, those of us who did masters, none of us got pass. Praise the Lord. We got more than that. So you are going to get more than that in Jesus' name. That is your destiny. Nobody settles for second best and is able to make impact, able to fulfill God's call on their life. When you get to the places where they're discussing their degrees, you stand up with your shoulders square and you discuss yours too without any problem or any fear. Hallelujah. When somebody says, I'm this and that, you say, so am I. Amen. Yeah, I qualified with a first class degree in English language. I don't care what your degree is. Me, God gave me a good degree too. Praise the Lord. You can be engineer of all that cares. But me, I'm standing here with a good first class degree in English. Hallelujah. And now my shoulder is square. Because if I turn on my English, you're not going to understand what I'm saying to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although I didn't do English. <laughs> but whatever your degree is, that's what it is. You be proud of it. You do make be excellent there. And then there are some ministry skills that are learned. They are learned. They are learned. They, you, you have ministry gifts. But the skills must be learned. The skills are learned in Bible college. They are learned in the school of disciples. And all kinds of other schools of ministry. They are learned in places like our empowerment conference that is coming up next Saturday. I want to believe God that every face that I'm looking at here. It's going to be in that empowerment conference in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have not taken your time off, go and take it now. Because it's in those places God has deposited something in somebody else's life or heart. And they are able to give you that instruction, information, where you wouldn't get it before. Praise God. Amen. So, gifts of ministry are given to you by the Holy Spirit. But they are honed in the school of study. Amen. So that glory can come to God. Let me, then number three, and for, for me this is really important. I, don't worry, I'm not going to take more than an extra five or ten minutes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For me, God bless you, sir. Number three thing is that I say we, how we acquire knowledge of skills and acquisition, skills acquisition, is to learn from others. Praise the Lord. Learn from others. 
I say here, be apprenticed. I'm not going to read the scriptures, but I will give you all the scriptures. Go and look at all the people in the Bible who were apprenticed. They were apprenticed. Now, if you look at Moses, Moses was apprenticed in Pharaoh's house. Praise the Lord. Exodus 2, 1 to 10. He was born there. He was raised there. Exodus chapter 3, chapter 3 and 4. He was called of God and he was asked to go back there. He ran away, remember? After he had killed the Egyptian. He was, God asked him to go back there when he was called. Exodus 5, chapters 5 to 14. He delivers Israel and then he leads them out of Egypt. And in Exodus chapter 15, we should read that song one day. He sings the song of deliverance. Sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. In Redeem, we know that song. Sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he cast into the sea. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord. That's verse 1 of Exodus 15. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and in the name that is above every other name. Maybe there is a horse and rider. That is chasing you, not allowing you to be able to sit down per se and fulfill destiny. In Jesus' name, this day they will be fed with their own flesh Amen. and they will be drunk on their own blood. Amen. In the name of Jesus, wherever they are operating from, from now we silence them in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, Moses was apprenticed. David, you know, David was apprenticed in, 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 in Saul's palace and also in the desert. 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13. He was called out of the desert and anointed for king. 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13. 1 Samuel 16, 14 to 23. His apprenticeship in the palace begins. He's made royal harpist. And after all kinds of situations and all kinds of circumstances, finally, in 2 Samuel 2 and 2 Samuel 5, he's anointed king of Judah and king of Israel in that order. Hallelujah. He did, he served his apprenticeship. Elisha and Elijah. Elisha was Elijah's apprentice. From 1 Kings 19 through to 2 Kings 2, Elisha was apprenticing for Elijah. 1 Kings 19 through to 2 Kings chapter 2. What about Joseph? Joseph apprenticed at Potiphar's house in service. Genesis 39, 1 to 20. Genesis 39, 1 to 20. He apprenticed in prison, in bondage, but he was being promoted. Genesis 39, 29, 21. All the way to Genesis chapter 40. Genesis 39, 21. All the way to Genesis chapter 40. And finally, he was ready for the palace and to be prime minister. In Genesis chapter 41, you see him rising to the position of prime minister in the palace of the king of the then world. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is no way you can avoid it. We also know of apprentices. Apprenticeships and tailors and barbers and, and, and hairdressers in our country, in Africa. They learn by apprenticeship. And it's not often easy. They have to go through. But then it gets to one day. They say they are doing their freedom. freedom. Oh, hallelujah. They are free there to go on and be their own person. To go on and begin to fulfill destiny. What about in our world today? Because we mustn't forget that. Let me tell you something. Nobody is going to give a doctor a job when he has not done housemanship. He has to do his apprenticeship. Nobody will give a nurse a job. Who has not done practical work through his or her training? Nobody. Nobody is going to give a solicitor a job if he has not done his uh, uh, training, whatever they call it. Uh, uh, boy, uh, no, that one is no, it's, it's barrister. The, the solicitor training contract. He must do training contract. Otherwise, he cannot be a solicitor. A barrister cannot be a, bar a barrister. They will call you to the bar. But if you don't do what is called pupilage, it's called it's one year training. You can't take any position in any barrister's set. No barrister's set will consider you. This is in our day to day. They cannot progress unless they do their apprenticeship. That is to say, you cannot skip the time of apprenticeship. Either you are in a new job, you are in a new location, or you are in a new ministry. You will do your time of apprenticeship, your time of learning in that place, so that you can succeed. So that you can learn the ropes and you can become very, very impactful for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm coming to a close. I'm rounding up. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord will help me. Amen. Number three thing that I say you need empowerment for is to build your networks. You must build networks. Amen. Networks work for you. You need them. You need to know people. Because it's people that help people. None of us is self-sufficient. None of us can do it by ourselves. And the truth of the matter is, if you have a look at Peter and John in Acts chapter 4, 
verses 23 to 31. Acts 4, 23 to 31. It's 23 that I particularly like. You know, they had been, it was after the, the, the healing of the um, man, the man at the gate, beautiful. And then, you know, the, the Sanhedrin were very upset with them. They put them in prison and all of that. And after a while, when they saw that they could not keep the people silent, they released Peter and John. And the Bible says, after they were released, that they went back to their own company. Praise the Lord. You must have a company. You must have those people who are praying for you or praying with you. They went back to their own company. If you read up to verse 31, you will see that, you know, when Peter and John had given them the report, then they started to pray again. They prayed, oh God, you have to intervene here. You must have your own company. It's not just life. It's not just life, just life, just life. No. You must have people who you run, run into that place. You say, pray for me, uh, uh, son. Pray for me, uncle. Pray for me, my friend. Pray for me, my prayer partner. So that they can help you, assist you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Build networks. And the, the truth of the matter is that when you meet people going up, if you, if you don't help them, if you don't build, when you're coming down, they'll be there. I think Pastor did you preach the message one time that he said you need to develop relationships both vertically, you know, up there and down there. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Take every opportunity that comes to you. Don't stand there and say it's not my business. Whatever they are doing, is it that house of uh, your, your homework club that they're doing? Who knows what they're doing? The ones who knows what they're doing there, it's not my business. No, take every opportunity. Remember the slave girl of Israel, the girl who was in Naaman's house in 2 Kings 5 1 to 19. She was just a slave, but she spoke up at the time that she needed to. Until today, she's still making impact. Why? We are still talking about her. We're still learning from her because she spoke up at the time she should. She got involved. Number four, watch who you are speaking with. Watch who you are speaking with. Ask God to empower you to watch who you are speaking with. Amen. Watch who you are befriending. Don't speak to those who will discourage you or those who will send you to hellfire with gossip. James chapter 3 verses 5 to 6. James 3, 5 to 6 says you should watch your mouth. You watch your lips. He says, put a guard upon my lips. And that's Psalm, Psalm 141, 3. He says, put a guard upon my lips, O God. Help me to watch my, my, my lips. James says, you know, the tongue is a small member of the body. But it is a fire. It can cause problems. Be careful what you say with your mouth. Be careful what you say with your mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, you know, it finally, I put here, finally, praise the Lord. We come to final. Number five. Have a deep knowledge and reliance on God. A deep knowledge and reliance on God. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. Says we are saved by grace through faith. Not by our own works. It's not, it's not anything we have done or anything we have earned. We need to fall deeper in love with Christ. You need the Holy Spirit, beloved. What I'm saying to you, play for me, son, is this exactly. That in all of this that we're talking about, your empowerer is the Holy Your empowerer is not anybody. It is the Holy Ghost himself. So you need to desire him. Desire him and his giftings in all ways. Desire him and his help. Hallelujah. He is the one who will enable you, who will empower you. It is he that alone can stand with you to fulfill your assignment. He's the only one that can make and you have impact or make you to make a difference in your generation. This month's theme means he promises to empower and to enable us to be impact makers, to be influencers. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be influencers in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that, you know, there are influencers are not just in the, in the house of commons. Although that's a good thing. I believe God that our children will go to the house of commons in this land Amen. in the name of Jesus and that in fact they will end up in the house of lords Amen. in Jesus name Amen. I believe that our own generation will go into the supreme court in this nation I believe that that rugby council is waiting for one or two or three of us to go into that council MPs you are supposed to be members of the council in your area stand and be voted for in your area and the truth of the matter is all these things tied together because if your character is not good in your area, nobody will vote for you. So watch how you speak, how you move around in the different areas in which you live. Because God sent you, Jesus Christ sent you here to be an influencer, to make an impact in your generation. I pray for all of us that in this season we will re receive Holy Spirit empowerment. I want us just to rise on our feet. You know, I don't have any prayer for you. I don't want you to ask for the Holy Ghost to come into your heart. You yourself. If that is your desire, we you want him to help you. You want him to enable you. 
You want him to set you on your path. You know something? There's no anointing that the Holy Spirit hasn't got. And believe me honestly, I can shout till I am blue in the face on this altar. If it doesn't do anything in your life, I'm just shouting for nothing. So I want to ask you to ask the Holy Spirit to come and help you. He's the helper. He's the enabler. He's the one who can make you to have influence in your generation. He's the one who can make you to be a solution bringer. He's the one who can make you to be an impact maker. So ask him, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. If you know it, help me. Quiet. Come, sweet Spirit, we pray. Come in your help. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own special way. Come in your own special way. Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you. Come sweet Spirit, we pray. Come sweet Spirit, we pray. Come in your strength and your power. Freshness of the Holy Spirit upon you, man, in the name of Jesus. More insights, more receipts from heaven, from the throne of grace, in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. And the church say a big, big amen. amen. If you believe, I decree a manifestation in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's say a big, big amen. amen. God bless you. Take your seat and jam your hands together for Jesus. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Have your seats. Have your seats. Empowerment. We are blessed today. Empowerment of, for character development. Empowerment for knowledge, study. Empowerment for learning. 
empowerment for building good relationship and deep reliance on God. The Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What I want to do now is just in the light of the word that we've had, in the light because I believe the Holy Spirit is on all of us afresh, it's important for us to mark our diaries. Let's mark our diaries, let's mark our registers, so pay attention very well with the freshness of the oil on you and you understanding you are here for impact. Um, the first prayer I want to make is that your space will never be empty in Jesus' name. So, so basic, uh, there are regular things that happens in our church on a weekly basis. I want us to take note of that. So come Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have Harvest Futures. Tuesdays and Thursdays is Harvest Futures, is homework club and a teaching class for age 9 to 11. And please, you can join us here if you have time. Basically, if you have spare time, you look at your diary very well. Maybe yours is a Tuesday, maybe yours is a Thursday. You can just pop in from um, 5.30 to about 7.30. And the Lord bless you real good in Jesus' name. So let's mark that in our diary. Maybe that's something you want to have impact on. Also, um, every Saturday from now till Christmas, uh, that's our Christmas carol. We have a community, the community choir. We have a rugby community choir that is not specific to Harvest Fellowship alone, but it's an open door for people to come in sing together the project ahead of us is the christmas carol a community carol so and that meeting holds every saturday by 10 a.m that meeting holds every saturday by 10 a.m you can also mark that uh is a two hour it doesn't exceed 12. 12 on the dot people on their way home so you can also pop that if you are inclined into music or you want to just even uh, implement or put to use these gifts and all the things we've been learning and the fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. This is for information not to be used now until maybe in the early in the new year. Um, we have the prayer meeting here every Saturday by 9, but for now it's suspended, so you can just mark that into the future. Um, okay um so it's important next week saturday is going to be a huge time here um annual empowerment conference the empowerment conference is with the intent to actually empower us amen is to actually empower us and it's going to be this saturday here in this auditorium the theme is becoming a person of impact becoming a person of impact we have uh, four speakers on that day. We have guest ministers, and then we'll be dealing on that subject topic, becoming a person of impact. The the Ibu people I know that are fathers is a father, but doesn't even have impact upon his family. So the impact we are talking about as a, a, a subject matter goes to you making impact even in your space in your own, in your space, in your workplace, in your space, in the church, like we've heard today. And please make it, just mark your diary, mark your diary, it's this Saturday. Of course, um, the transport community will be ready to move, and um, I'll be discussing for Saturday, transport will move by 8 from um, Coventry, am I correct? I'm resolving it now, sir. I think it is good. 8.30. Let me give you 8.30. Coventry will move by 8.30. Um, please, you're not working on it. And uh, <laughs> Southam will also move by 8.39. We'll discuss further. Amen. We'll discuss further. But we'll do. I will engage all this and it will be fine. So it's the impact conference. Can I ask you to ask the ladies to wait, please, after service? Because we're here for a whole day. I'm going to need, we need each other's help to do something about that. Okay. Yeah. So the sisters will wait. After, after this um, service, Amen. God bless you. So, so I think that has been well explained to us, and um, and um, also I want all workers, 
and ministers to also mark our diary. Let's mark our diary. It's the last Saturday of this month. Hello? You, you, I should go and give you my now. Uh, so let's mark our diaries, all workers and ministers. The last Saturday of this month will be our retreat, you know, our workers and ministers retreat. Just mark it and then um, the Lord will bless us real good in Jesus' name. More information will come on that. Next Sunday is going to be awesome here and it's very strategic. You know, today for instance is day 38 of our reading the purpose driven life. By Tuesday, we'll be wrapping up on that book. By Wednesday, we have a special session here. On Saturday, we have the Impact Conference. And on Sunday, by the grace of God, we have a guest minister in the house. Amen. We have a guest minister that will be here. Make sure you are ready to receive Pastor Roy Crown. will be here live and direct to give us from the throne of grace. And I know definitely that the grace for making impact will flow into you more in the name of Jesus. Amen. So these are diaries that are very important. There are about two I left out intentionally, but just mark all this is key. Now that you are a teenager doesn't mean you shouldn't be there. In fact, you need it more. Do you understand? You need it more. I started attending conferences as a double digit. So you need it more. You know, and the Lord will bless us real good in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, um, all right, all right. I think this one has been covered. Again, don't forget, next week Sunday is a unique service here and it's an impact service and the Lord will bless us. Good. Tomorrow morning is our push. I saw it on the screen. And push is our Monday prayer meetings, 6 a.m. to 6.30. Again, we'll be praying until something will happen. This week, something good will happen in your life in Jesus' name. So I believe we've uh, put all this together in a diary. Uh, again, finally, before we move into the next phase of the program today, we have Andre celebrating his birthday, like we've heard. Um, so there are refreshments in fact, all the children, everybody, the children more, and then all of us, there is a cake, there is a menu, you know, for us to just celebrate with him. And the Lord will bless us after service in Jesus' name. We'll quickly do that. I will delay the movement of the bus just just a few just a few minutes. I know everybody has planned. Those who have planned, we just need us. You know, let's celebrate with one another, and then we can now begin to move as planned. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Today is the first Sunday in the month of November, and it's our Thanksgiving Sunday. I want you to wear a cap that um, I've not thanked God. So let's take it that I've not thanked God. Now I want to thank Him. If you are to thank God, how will you thank Him? And we always know that God appreciates a cheerful giver. Jesus detests people who don't appreciate. Ten people came to Him as He was leaving church. Ten lepers. And as they came to Him, He said, okay, Today's service, so you are going to show yourself as you go, go and receive your miracle. As you are going, know, all of them received the miracle. One, only one came back. And he came back to him and he said, Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus said, Is it not 10 people that we gave gifts? Where are the other nine? I believe all of us here today will be that one. So we're going to spend like seven, six to seven minutes. You know, two things we're going to do together. We're going to give our Thanksgiving offering. That's the first thing. Let me to display the church account. Thanksgiving offering for you coming into the month. Think about it very well. It can't be the usual thing. Think about it. Let's envelope go around for those who want to give cash. Ushers move around so that when choir is singing, you'll be giving your Thanksgiving offering. You'll be dancing. I want you to to, to express your gratitude to God. Don't stand, you know, straight like this. You are not a soldier. You know, don't be a soldier. Hallelujah. So we want a very good danceable song choir. I trust you. And then anybody that needs to look with your hand, they will give to you. We'll rise up on our feet, all of us. We are going to thank God for this month. And then we'll pray on our thanks to God. Be on your feet. I like you to appreciate God. Somebody is looking up and dancing, sir. 
Make sure you dance, make sure you are taking God where you are, make sure you are celebrating.
let it be pleasing to you that this month, oh God, in every life and every family, there will be dancing in the name of Jesus. Amen. There will be new songs in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, there will be prosperity in the name of Jesus. Amen. There shall be no lack in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every need in every life as a result of this thanksgiving. Lord, please meet this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. Men will favor you. Amen. Women will favor you. Amen. Organizations will favor Amen. you. Amen. We sang that our song will be hallelujah. This month, by this awesome thanksgiving, we will shout hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Amen. Things we need that we don't even know. Lord, things we need that we know. Lord, the things we need as a church that we know and the ones we don't know. This month, as a result of this thanksgiving, they are provided in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. There will be no occasion of sorrow in our midst. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Money will serve us. Amen. Money will answer to us. Amen. As we move for God, we will make more impact. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And the people say, Be gay. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Take your seats. Before I call Mama to come and wrap up the service. So we launched a new Pastor Pinga, I gave you some things. Yeah. We launched a new um, um evangelistic uh, outreach. It's so simple, it's so strategic. Uh Pastor Godwin can also take to go to that side. Uh this was discussed last week Sunday. No, we were discussed on Wednesday at the midweek service. So, and we want to implement it now. So, you see, those things you have, you can just give one one now. It, it's, it's, it's strategic. We have over 10,000 in the church. I've just got at like 1,000 today. So, what this actually says is um, our address, our CCG Harvest Fellowship, join our services 9.30 to 12.30, you know, on Sunday. And then on Wednesday, 7 p.m. And then, you know, we say we have a seat for you. So what we need this to do is to actually go into the hands of people and into the homes of people. So going by hands, you know, for instance, yesterday at the, at the, uh, at the market there, so you see people, you give them, you know, just for you, if they take, you know, if they don't take, no wala. But however, nobody can stop you from dropping a flyer into the into the doorposts. Nobody can stop you. I see plenty in my house. Before I get there now, the Jehovah Witness will have dropped. Yeah. We drop every Sunday. Every Sunday. So you, you can't be taking one. Do you understand? For instance, this young man, I'm his popsy. I'm his popsy in the UK. Give him like 20. 20, 50. That your street. That your street is long, long. That your street is long. Ah, Pastor now says, uh, God is saying, Pastor is coming for me now. <laughs> okay, so no, but what I want you to do is take the one you know you will use because we don't want it to waste. Now, you know what I want, and I will explain. So, this is our experience. I, I think Emmanuel too experienced this when we went out. Now, if you try to drop this into the doorpost, it won't enter. It will not enter because between that thing is a fiber there's a fiber so the strategy we've used is you fold don't fold it like this you fold it like this fold it this way eh? then you can use your hand first to push it in and then or the strategy was he was using his phone don't use your phone <laughs> so, uh, but you know, because there's a fiber, and this thing will go in. So, you use something to allow the fiber to go, then you push this in. Imagine how did you do it the other day? What were you using? So, that was what he was doing. So, so. Poke it with your hand. Yes, it will go in. So, so, so that, that, that's the strategy. So, no, so the ask the ask dog, you don't go there now. You don't go there. You don't go there. Now, we, it's, so, 
I, I believe we have enough. Just as you are going home, when you want to make impact, hello church, when you want to make impact, you don't procrastinate. So this is the strategy. As you are going home now, before you just do it before you enter the house. Because once you enter the house, hey, hey, the weather will be. Do you understand? As you are going now, just do what you need to do. If you are going shopping now, you know, just give people, let's tidy it up. I believe we will finish that one. You are I'm not taking that back into the office. Who wants more? Who wants more? Who wants more? Who wants more? So, this is what I want. I'll give those of you in Southern my assignment so that by the time I'm coming to pick you on Sunday, I'll be picking a full bus. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so that's it. Now, um, um, so the second level of this is that on Saturdays, once uh, community choir finish by 12, those of you that have time to join us, we actually go out. So we've mapped the city and um, we go, you know, area by area. So Saturday, next Saturday is another. Oh, no, we are not doing Saturday because we have conference. But you know, bring all these teenagers. Emmanuel is my leader dear. He already knows the strategy. You know, we know how to do it. So teenagers come, we know, and the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Today is your first time in this church. Are you like that? Today is your first time. Sam, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing my guy here. Let me to tap him for the first time. Let's celebrate him. Celebrate Jesus. Today is your first day, right? You are blessed. Come on, give Jesus a big, big hand. We love you. The Lord bless you. You're welcome, sir. We love you so, so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. See, we are wonderful people. What's the name, sir? Sam Olayinka. Olayinka what? Giwa. Olayinka Giwa. We are your family. See, Giwa family. You are welcome, sir. How did you know about us? You search online and you found us. God bless you. Are you going to help me? God bless you. Jesus of big big and you're welcome to RCCG Harvest Fellowship Church. You know, and here, a place of destiny. Same redeeming. But this is the place and the Lord will establish you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's point our hands on from him and pray for him that all his desires, all that God are set for him to achieve a life and destiny as he's joining us in this fellowship that they will find fulfillment they will see fulfillment heaven will favor him we are people of favor we are people of riches that god would establish him in the name of jesus as he sets his feet on rugby rugby is for jesus and that's that aura that aura in Christ we manifest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Lord, we pray for Brogiwa. We ask, oh God, that you establish him in, this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your purpose for him in life will not be lost in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sir, you will prosper in this land. Amen. You will be favored in this land. Amen. God will be with you in this land. Amen. Even will bow to you in this land. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you so much, sir. Please help us to feel that kind, and I'll meet you after the service. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Two things we're going to do. We're going to welcome Bragiwa with our love song. Amen. You know that's a love song. Yeah. That we just go around him and we love on him. We want him to know that not only is he family, we also love him. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. And see all over the world. And go around and just love and and him. Glory and shake his hand. And shake his hand and love on him. 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 Love on
prophesy over your life, sir. Just make sure that you follow the Lord in this land, that you serve him in this land. He will bless you, he will make you an example in our generation and in your family. In the name of Jesus, so shall we be. Hallelujah. We're going to, to say our our prophet, prophetic declaration for our own lives. Amen. I think it's on there now. And then we're just going to say the grace and go. Hallelujah. Multimedia is a little behind, but uh, they will get there. All right, I will help you. Hallelujah. Amen. Go on. Say, I will make it. I will, make it. I will succeed. I will, succeed. I will do well. I will, do I will reach my goal. I will, I will make goal. heaven. I will, I will make it. Strike your chest. I will succeed. I will do well. I will reach my goal. I will make heaven. God helping me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You will make it. You will succeed. Amen. No matter what the enemy tries, you will succeed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You will do well. Whatever you lay your hand upon to do, you will do well in it. In the name of Jesus. You will reach your goal. In life and in destiny, you will reach your goal. And it shall be well with you and your household. In Jesus' mighty name. One other announcement that Pastor Digi left out and the Holy Spirit reprimanded me that I must say it. Next Sunday, we start our language service. We're going to start it. Yeah, praise the Oh, thank you for celebrating. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But Chike is going to be interpreting. Mr. Adem is going to be interpreting. But Chike is going to be on the keyboard. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We start our language services. It will be 12.30, so we won't be ending at this kind of time. We'll finish at 10, 5 past, 10 past 12. And then we we'll start that language service. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's only be for one hour, one and a half hours. God bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to be able to pray Yoruba. I don't speak very good Yoruba, but Pastor Lady does. And I have a brother from in London who speaks very good Yoruba. When I minister in Yoruba, I tongues my twist. So, but, you know, God asked us to do it. And like he said, when God gives you a command, you don't hold back, you don't hesitate, you just go and do it. Because he knows how he will water it and I will bring yield from it. God bless you Amen. as we prepare for that also next time. You see, we have a packed November. God loves us. He doesn't want us to be idle. He doesn't want the enemy to find work for our hands. Hallelujah. And also, please be praying for us, for Coventry. We are going to plant in Coventry on the 11th of December in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We still don't have a venue, but we will have. We will get oh, yes. We are going to get one in Jesus' name. Come on. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You and have an overcoming and incredibly blessed November. Amen. Amen. Jesus. God bless you. Have a great week.